G'day, good morning, welcome to the channel. I'm really excited, I'm at my favourite wetlands. I've got the Sony A7 Mark IV, the Sony 200 to 600. I've just bought this, the sun's coming up, I can't talk too much. There's kangaroos, there's cockatoos, I need to take some photos. Oh, this is nice. Got a cockatoo on a tree with the sun coming up. I'm not sure if we can make out the cockatoo or not. Top of the tree. I'm a little bit frantic because the sun is coming up and I'm trying to see the best viewpoint. I think vertical is the way to go. Cockatoos just flying off. <sighs> I apologize how chaotic this is. I'm just trying to make the most of the sun and something backlit. There's, there's two, I can hear two kangaroos fighting. Oh, there they are, they're fighting. Two, two kangaroos fighting. I'll try and get closer. So there's a falcon in the tree up here. All right, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. There's kangaroos, there's falcons. Um, the sun's coming up, it's beautiful, it's warm. Uh, I'm just in my element, honestly. I'm just uh, having so much fun. Uh, why have I got the A7 IV and the 200 to 600? Well, I've always wanted this lens. I've admired it for a long time. I have used it before, but I obviously don't have Sony. I shoot Canon. If you're new to the channel, I've shot Canon for 12 years, but I've always wanted this lens and it went on sale during the Black Friday sales. It was an unbelievable price in Australia. I paid 2,050 uh, Australian dollars and I think it's around 2,000 US. So it doesn't make any sense why Sony are selling this so cheap. So I had to buy it and therefore I needed a camera. I asked my beautiful subscribers, what they thought and they said the a7 IV was quite a good body. I couldn't afford the a7R5 or the A1 so I've gone with this body and I'm just going to have a bit of fun. I'm going to try it and I think it'll help me make better videos because if I get comfortable with other brands not just Canon I won't be quite as biased towards Canon and reviews going forward so that's the reason I've got it. I'm happy to have it. I'm definitely not selling my Canon gear. I'm just investing in the Sony system because I want to try other brands. Uh, I'm struggling with the controls, to be honest, because they're different to Canon. Uh, my fingers just don't know where to go, so I'm fumbling around. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, enough talking. I think we need to go and photograph some more birds. Let's go. So I'm in the car and there's a uh, cockatoo in a tree and it's backlit, creating some interesting silhouettes. Got two birds on there. A little bird and a big bird. But this is the benefit sometimes of just driving around in the car and having the lens with you and you can just take take a few shots as you go. So um, just take the most of the opportunities when they present themselves.
I'm not sure if you can hear them, but we've got some little songbirds, some little golden-headed sesiculars calling here. And if they're landing on these um, little branches, I've got to get a photo, sorry. There's a bird that's backlit over here. Oh, that's nice. Oh, look at this, uh, look at this. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. Birds singing, oh my God, backlit. Oh, this is good. This is amazing, <laughs> this is amazing. That might have been the shot, hopefully that was. So we're, the sun's coming up over here. Traditionally, I don't generally shoot into the sun, but I'm trying to be creative. 2023 is the year of trying things different. The birds landed on a couple of these stalks and it's quite wide, so I wasn't that close. Hopefully it's a nice habitat shot. Fingers crossed on that one. I've got a very distinctive call that you might be able to hear. Oh, it's back over here. So the birds are just here in the grass. So all I'm going to try and do is just walk around to try and create an image. I can hear them, but I just can't see them. Oh, there's one. Got a bird in the long grass here. Sometimes you just get lucky. I just happened to be driving along and I heard the bird pulled over and there just happened to be a number of them the fighting in here, I don't know if they're breeding or it's a territory thing, but there's quite a few birds here jumping around in these reeds, singing, and enabling me to get quite a few shots, which is pretty cool, you know? So I'm finding I can hand hold this fairly easily. I'm not struggling um, to hand hold it. I think it's around 2.6, 2.7 kilos, which I think is around six pounds. So um, yeah, I'm having no real issues hand holding this lens so far, uh, which is good. So something I've quickly noticed is the minimum focus distance is 2.4 meters, which isn't too bad for a 600 millimeter lens. But uh, I tried to photograph a spider and I couldn't get as close as I could with the 100 to 500, which is less than a meter. Um, so there's quite a big difference in that minimum focus distance. Uh, this isn't gonna be as much of a macro lens as say the 100 to 500. Even though this is 600 millimeters, it's not a true 600, especially when you're close. It's probably closer to, oh, 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 stay there. Stay there. I can feel the heat in that sun already. Probably don't have too much longer. I might just go and see if we can get some water birds just to get something different. So we'll keep driving and keep looking. But that was an awesome find. So I've stopped next to this little pond. Uh, I've been here before. If you're new to the channel, uh, these Australasian grebes in this pond are fairly tame and they make good autofocus subjects. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get down low next to the water and photograph the grebes. How I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna use my ground pod. This is called a skimmer ground pod. I'll put a link in the description of where you can get it from. You can make your own. My mate Brian made his own. I'll share a couple of photos of his here that you can see just a wok or a frying pan from Ikea. You can make your own. All right, so we've just got our gimbal, which has an Arca Swiss. I've got the Arca Swiss plate on here. I just put it in there, slot it in, and then tighten it up. We do need to balance it, so it's wanting to go forward, so I need to bring it back. All right. A whistling kite has just flown into this tree up here. 
All right, so I've got some shots of the whistling kite, but they were side lit, so we had shadows over the face. So I've actually walked out into the swamp around so that the sun was coming over my shoulder to light up the bird. So we got rid of the shadows on the face and I think it ended up with a, a far better photo. Um, but then I need to share my error with you. <laughs> the battery died on the camera and I didn't have a spare with me. So um, what I need in these camera bodies, if anyone's listening, is a warning like on your phone to say you've got 10% or 20% or maybe change the percentage to a red color once it gets under 20% because it's up in the right hand corner and for whatever reason I just don't see it. I'm so focused on photographing the bird that all of a sudden the battery just dies and I should have had a spare one. It's my bad, it's my fault. I should take a spare battery with me. So if you're not aware the Sony a7 IV actually takes the CF Express A card which is unique to Sony. It's a bit of a pain to be honest. So I've got CF Express B for my Canon bodies um, I just wish everyone had the same memory card, but alas, they use a CF Express A. They are quite expensive for what they are, and I'm very, very grateful to Prograde who actually sent me this card. So now they have offered all my beautiful subscribers and members a 15% off discount on their website. Now it is US based and the postage is quite high to other countries, but if you live in the US, you can definitely take advantage of that 15% off. They're great memory cards. I use them in all my cameras and bodies and I'm very grateful that they support the channel. Now, another error I made is I forgot to check the HDMI out on the camera and it's actually different to my Canon bodies so I can't use my monitor. I'm gonna to have to buy a different cable, um, which I wish I'd done that earlier. But anyway, it's the way it is. <laughs> you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So let's head down and photograph some ducks and some grebes. I'm just trying to think where I can go. The sun is coming this way and it's traveling that way. So we might go into that corner over there, maybe just to the left of those reeds. So we'll go over and do that. All right, so we've got a grebe just cruising in the water, taking some shots. No wind, so we've got nice reflections. Oh, oh that was nice, jumped out of the water. Oh, and there's a young bird with it. Oh, look, there's, we've got a baby. Oh, the eye tracking is working extremely well. So we've got a family scene here of a mother and a young one. All right, so I've got down nice and low. And uh, as you can see, the ground pod's gone in the mud. I can't get my eye down to the viewfinder, so I'm just using the screen, which is great. Um, it's nice that it's got the tilt screen, just like the Canon bodies. I'd love to get some sort of engagement between the young and the old. Adults got something giving to the young bird. <laughs> got some pretty cool feeding behavior going on. The adult is catching things and giving it to the young grebes. They're a little bit far away, but I'm just trying to capture that action. I think the key with anything is just to put in the time. Like I feel like a real beginner with this uh, camera because my hands just don't know where to go. I'm fumbling the settings, I'm getting the settings wrong. Um, it just feels awkward and different because I'm just not used to it. But I'm sure I'm just gonna use this camera a lot for the next month or two before I do that full review. And I'm sure by the end of that, I'll be a lot more comfortable and I'll be a lot quicker at adjusting and adapting to situations. What did I think of the 200 to 600 and the A7 Mark IV? 
Well, the most important thing is I had a lot of fun. I've had the most awesome morning photographing the kangaroos, the cockatoos, the little cesticulars. Uh, it was just awesome, had so much fun. Look, I need to use this a lot more before I can give a proper impression of it. Um, the autofocus was fine today. I had a little bit of trouble picking up the grebe straight away. The eye tracking seems to take a little bit longer than on Canon to pick up the bird, but when it did pick it up, it was focusing on it well. I'm sure the quality is gonna be fantastic. I need your help for the autofocus. Any tips or tricks with you using the Sony bodies? What are you, how do you have your autofocus set up? Obviously, if you enjoyed this video, give it that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, thanks to all the new members that I picked up from my last video. I'm overwhelmed with the support. If you're not aware, for the price of less than a cup of coffee per month, you can become a member. I've got an amazing 2023 digital calendar that is free with your membership. You can download that, put it on your computer, your laptop, your tablet, and enjoy all those high quality shots that I took last year. Um, until the next video, happy birding, enjoy your 2023, and I can't wait to continue using this Sony setup. Until then, catch you later. See ya.